Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. This is the December meeting for the Dallas and Lance County Zoning Board of Appeals. Before we start, I want to explain how we operate so that we can keep up or you can keep up with us. I will call each case by case number and case name. Staff will come to the lectern and give us the meat of the request. We have it in writing that they submitted to us, but they will also do it verbally here for the record. Once staff has presented the proposal, then there will probably be questions and or discussions between staff and members of the board or amongst the board. Once we are satisfied and we understand what's being requested, I will ask if the applicant or anyone else here, possibly representing the applicant, might want to come to the lecture to give us any additional information or answer any questions that the board may have. Once we've heard from that, if there are multiple people in support, we would like to know you are here. If you if you have nothing else to add, what you feel you need to have in front of us has already been presented. Please don't give it to us again. Once we're satisfied, we've heard the pro side, then I will ask you if there are any persons here in opposition or if any persons have questions concerning what is being requested. If there are multiple people, one person, please come to the lectern and give us the information you'd like for us to take under advice. Again, there will probably be questions and or discussions among board members or back and forth with whoever is at the lecture at the time. If there are multiple people in opposition, again, please give us the information as concisely, completely as you can. If you are here in opposition or have questions, if your question has not been answered or you 
feel like that information has not been brought to us, then come to the lectern and give us that information. Please do not hammer us time and time again with the same information we've already heard because of the number of people here. We may have a lot of opinions and we want everybody to get a chance to be heard, but don't hammer us with the same thing over and over. Once we have heard from both sides, we generally will render a decision here today. However, it is in the bylaws that if the board feels it prudent to put off for 30 days until the next regular scheduled meeting in case information appears to be lacking or parties need to talk, we do have that right. Okay, we're going to make one change on the agenda. We're going to flip-flop. We're going to hear the Valdosta case first, and then we'll hear the Lowndes County case. The first case we're going to hear is application 2018-08 Tim Harris. Tracy, you have the floor. Thank you. This application, this request in front of you, is from Mr. Tim Harris. It's specifically for the case of the Manhattan Patterson of your property zone highway commercial. It consists of, according to my notes, a little bit more than half an acre, located at 326 North Action. Zone highway commercial, also in the urban commercial corridor. Contains the existing Kentucky Fried Chicken fast food restaurant with a couple of accessory structures as well as existing parking. The applicant is in the process of renovations to several of our local KFCs. So when these plans came through, actually they had the first step before they submitted plans. We talked about the potential need for several variances. So when the plans came in, we identified three variances. There's a subject property in the commercial section of Ashley and Patterson are commercial in nature. The proposed site plan is a little bit different than what is existing. They're proposing to add some curbing that will take away two parking spaces. They're already currently non conforming. The restaurant is a total of 2,834 parking spaces. For restaurants with drive-thrus, we require a we have a requirement of 14 spaces per thousand square feet per people. So for this particular restaurant, it would it would require three parking spaces. However, it was built in the late 70s under a prior set of regulations. So up until this point, it's been legally operating as legal non They are proposing to renovate. And propose to add some curbing that will take away two parking spaces, decreasing the parking from 33 spaces to 31. That's your first variance. Your second variance is the impervious cap. It's also highway commercial, which most of our commercial districts have a maximum impervious cap. For highway commercial, the maximum cap is 75%. So for this particular parcel, it would be. Actually, they are at 80 percent impervious with a total impervious surface of 23,399 square feet. They are going to add about 930 square feet of impervious, bringing them up to 83.4 percent from 80 to 24,329 24, square feet. So a slight increase in impervious. The last variance is to set back for an accessory structure. Currently, they have two accessory structures, and they are proposing to remove one of those and move the second one slightly. The relocated <coughs> accessory structure is sitting in a slant to the northern property. It is proposed to sit in a slant to the northern property line. Um, the closest point would be 1.7 feet from the northern property line. The other quarter would be 2.8 feet from the property line. The requirement for accessory structures is 10 feet. So they're asking for a variance for that. Three variances, slightly increasing the nonconformity in each circumstance, but it's going to add circulation benefits to the law. Um, so staff.
active unit, we are in support of students and increase the circulation on an already top line. So we are supportive and recommending any questions. Anyone have any questions? I have one, just one question. How close is the accessory structure currently to the property line? And I don't know. Thank you. But I'm waiting to Anybody else have questions, discussions? Traffic is split to this. Yes. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you very much, Tracy. Mr. Harris, would you like to give us any additional information or sure. be willing to answer possible questions? Thank you, Pastor. Thanks for having me. Thanks for uh, uh, listening to our uh, request. Uh, I am obviously in favor of the request. Uh, when I was Tim Harris, I've been in business here. We've been in business since 1965. And uh, uh, we're trying to improve the flow of traffic at that, uh, at that KFC. The drive through is horrible. Uh, if you've ever tried to get it on all the back of the street, Somebody ends up hanging out in the National Street, blocking traffic there. This should completely alleviate, <coughs> excuse me, alleviate that traffic issue. They'll also help you in, in, in the speed of service from our standpoint as well. <coughs> as far as the, um, the distance currently, the current smaller shed is more than actually removed and it is approximately. I 
misunderstood a little bit, I guess, when I was reading it. You're not going to have two serving lines. You're going to have a loop that will we'll bypass or come around to get it, so you still have one drive through service. Line. That is correct. So okay. it's, it's, in, in essence, it will elongate the, the drive through line, which actually speeds up. Well, that was one of my questions. I kept looking at trying to figure out how you were going to serve right. two. Yeah. But uh, that is plain. That is plain. <laughs> okay. Anybody else have questions? <coughs> Any other discussions? Is there anyone else here in support that feels like they have information we don't have and need to give? Is there anyone here in opposition to this request or anyone have questions about what is being requested? Was there any response to your office tracing? No. Ladies and gentlemen, any other questions, any discussions? We are being faced with a nine space parking variance. 8.4 square foot variance to the impervious area from 75 to 83.4 and we're getting we're being requested for an 8.3 foot side yard variance for the accessory field. Can I get motion from anyone on this case? Make a motion and we approve the variance as submitted. Second. I have a motion and I have Mr. Holt as a second. Paul made the motion. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. Good luck with it. Hope it all works out for you. Thank you. Okay, the next case we'll call is County Case VAR 2018-20. Hill and Victoria Thomas. Mr. Chairman, uh, I've got a conflict potentially in this case, and I'm going to abstain from voting. Let the record note that Mr. Holt has a conflict, and he is going to abstain. Ms. Deborah, it's your show. Thank you, This is an application request for Mr. Joe Thomas and his wife, Ms. Victoria Thomas. Mr. L. Stafford Thomas and his wife, Ms. Victoria Thomas. This property is located on Gaines Lane, also known as, or formerly known as, Jones Lane. This property is located at the end of this 30-foot right-of-way. Uh, this is a 20-plus acre tract, RA, which is the residential agricultural zone. Mr. Thomas is asking for a variance in section 4.0306 of the ULBC as it pertains to establishing a cemetery in Lyons County. Mr. Thomas is uh, asking, this variance request is of twofold. One is to table 4.036B as it pertains to road frontage. The ULDC requires a minimum of 200 feet of road frontage. This particular lot has 30 feet. The second area of this variance to section 4.03.06G as it pertains to access. The ULDC requires that use is established on a collector, an ulterior, or state highway gains lane is designated as a local road. Um, the TRC gave consideration to this request and the TRC um, is recommending denial based, based on a cemetery at this location appears to be out of scale and inconsistent with the existing development pattern and inconsistent with the supplemental standards that are designed to address potential land use impacts. And that's what I have. All right, thank you. 
Any questions? Any discussions from the board? <coughs> Thank you, Deborah. Is there, is Mr. or Ms. Thomas here? And if so, would you like to come to the lectern and give us any additional information or answer some potential questions? Uh, my name is James Horton. Um, I'm here to speak on Mr. Thomas' behalf. Uh, this is Mr. Thomas here. And would I be introduce yourself? And uh, I live in that. Uh, yeah, I need to make that. It's 103 South Washington Street, Putnam, Georgia. And for the record, your relationship is your I'm a, legal or something? I'm not legal. I'm just a, uh, um, a friend in the company. Okay. Good enough. My name is Bill Sarah Thompson, and uh, I live 701 on State Road. and uh, I'm one of the questions they have in the cemetery over enough of people. And um, I pray to God, I believe today that this cemetery will be open uh, for the people and uh, for everybody, not just black, white, Chinese, Mexican, Hispanic, for everybody. And um, we will have a real nice cemetery. And um, I don't see nothing wrong with the cemetery. All the cemeteries in Lyons County right after four. Sunset Hall, they had no more graves out there. Someone alone one gets murdered or killed unexpectedly. <coughs> People running everywhere trying to find, ain't got no one to bear. And if you're a member to the church, got a little cemetery behind the church, you can't be buried at the church because you're not a member of the church. And we really need a um, big cemetery. And it's going to bring about five jobs for people here in Miles County to help maintain, keep the grass cut, keep the clean, and everything. And um, I have other. Gentlemen's here can speak on behalf of the cemetery. And I really, you know, God give the truth. We all got to go one day. We, we belong to die. We're going to be here. We don't have to have a fix on God. Now, we're not going to All right. Okay, so what I'd like to do is give you some um, information. I know Deborah covered the variance request um, very well. She covered it uh, completely. What I'd like to do, um, first of all, I would like to say that the, the ULDC is a complex code, and I had a lot of experience with zoning and land use and that sort of thing. And I had to study and look it up and look up the sections, and I have access to that through my, you know, through Google and through computer and stuff like that. I would dare say that someone like Mr. Thomas who bought this piece of land on the courthouse steps uh, from a tax sale and who found out that one of the potential uses would be for a cemetery that he could use the property for, uh, that I don't think that anyone would expect him or anyone else uh, who doesn't work in planning and zoning or land use or who's not a land use attorney or a real, real estate developer would know that the property has to meet uh, some special codes in addition to just the fact that it is permitted in the rural agricultural zone area. So I would say that, first of all, that in a way there is a hardship formed because the general public may know that the piece of land can be used for a particular use, but they're not um, there, when you buy a piece of property, it's a special <coughs> tax sale like that. There's no way to know ahead of time what special criteria that you might have to meet. And I know that she might, covered, but if you're speculating and you're buying land, it's up to him to know right. what he can and can't do before. Right. It, it mm -hmm. and that's, you know, it that, that may be underlined, but that's right. It is, but um, I would dare say that anybody probably on this board would know all the conditions of a particular piece of property without having to go and study this in the ULDC. And I would dare say the public doesn't even know what the ULDC is for the most part. I know you all do, you have experience, it's commonplace to you, but to the public it is not commonplace. And um, 
So that is that is one of the and looking at the uh, review criteria for the range of the variance, um, this particular property meets, if not all of them, it meets many of the criteria. I don't know if you all have studied this, it was on the table that I picked up when I first came in. I looked at this particular property um, in relation to that. And so I do think it very much, and if you want to look at that, it very much meets those codes. In the rural zoning district, uh, in the residential agricultural, which this property is located, there's 21 particular uses of property that are available in that um, zoning category. Five of them are permitted without any special codes. 16 of them require special codes. Um, of the uh, available uses in this particular zoning category, uh, it's, for instance, manufactured homes, there's personal care homes, there's daycares, there's agricultural uses that can be used for livestock storage, um, all kinds of things like that that would bring um, a heavier use to the land, it would bring continuous traffic throughout the day, it would bring noise or pollution. Uh, the proposed cemetery is going to be park life. It will be a peaceful place. Um, the name that he's kind of thinking about using is called Peaceful Oaks Cemetery, planting some oak trees, having some areas of rest um, and reflection in the cemetery. Um, it will have a buffer all the way around the cemetery. It will be fenced in. Um, it will not create any pollution or any noise. It will have people coming in uh, groups to have a, a funeral, of course, but it would not be an everyday thing. Um, it will be open from 10 to 5 on Monday through Saturday and closed completely on Sunday for no services at all. And there will be a restroom, uh, water available there, uh, an office, um, and it will be a park lot setting that will be maintained. And um, it, will be a, it will be a nice addition quiet addition to the neighborhood. So um, <clears throat> by virtue of the, the way that the road gets <coughs> into the property, the 200 uh, foot frontage is not possible because of geography of the land. So that's one of the, the requests right there. And the other one, um, the other request that uh, Deborah was uh, referring to is that the road is a lane, it's not a, uh, a large enough size road. And that, there is no control over that. Um, I don't think that um, that the uh, regular citizen would know the difference between the different types of roads or streets or whatever in the city and the county. Well, he's a regular citizen. Quietly, quietly. <laughs> so, um, as you, as you saw, it's all zone residential, agricultural. The proposed use is going to be a park, like a private cemetery, you know, as Mark said. So I don't think that there's any detriment to the neighborhood or to the families in the neighborhood or uh, to the property itself. All right. Thank you very much. Yep. Hang on, sir. Okay. Any questions? Any discussions? I got a quick question. Um, what is your plan to handle uh, large amounts of traffic when there's a funeral procession or a, a burial occurring? What, what would you do about large volumes of traffic coming out there at one time? How do you handle that? That's probably a very good question that uh, I would not say that I had addressed that particular question. Normally, you do have law enforcement that brings uh, that brings groups out in funerals, they control the access, they you know, flash the lights, and they run ahead and then run after. So I would just have to say that law enforcement would have to, to help. But there's only really about 10 houses on the road, so there's not like, there's just not a planned development. I'm really wondering like, how, where do you plan to park everybody? I mean, is there gonna be sufficient parking to keep everybody off of uh, sure, the cemetery is there, so there's, if you look at, I, I don't think that the staff showed a particular, I don't know if it's in your packet or not, but 
This is a plan that was done by a surveyor that shows that there's two lane driving all the way around. There's parking here, uh, there's parking here, there's parking here, and the cars can stack uh, on these paved areas between the, the lots. So Do you have any idea? This, how plan, this is 23 acres of land. And there's 15 acres of land right here that's not even used. It could be made into a parking area if that turned out to be necessary. Okay. I'm just, I'm just wondering, are you confident that you, you have a plan in place to keep traffic from backing up? Oh, uh, the traffic the will not be on the road at all. It's going to come in here. This is a big loop right here, and here's a paved two-lane loop all the way around the cemetery, plus these driving lanes all the way through the plot of that land. So. It's definitely a, it's a huge piece of land if you go out there. It's 20 some odd acres of land. So there's plenty of area. And there's a whole section left completely undeveloped. So there's plenty of area. And it's all cut, cleared, uh, and open land at this point. <coughs> Any other questions? Discussion? Is there anyone else here in support that would like to give us any additional information we don't already have? My name is Julie Mitchell, and what I'm here to say is that I get your address, please, ma'am. I'm going to be too much. Okay. I'm just here to say that there is a need for a cemetery. It's, it's moving on. My family started out with the Jones Cemetery. And now, when I go out there, even though they've added, because we turned it into a poor baby out the home and died. Please address okay, the here. Then, it was a lot of it. And it's now that there's no more sunset, everybody's going to a poor baby. And it's filling up real. There really isn't anywhere else. A small cemetery on Claymore. It's just established and it's already, you know, and there's no way to put it there. And everybody don't want to be cremated. And it's a new And the need will be greater. And I think everyone who disagrees with it now will start agreeing with it when there is no more grave. And what right now. Please, the audience. The urgency is not there, so it's not. All right. And that's all I have. Anyone else in support that would like to give us any information that we don't already have? Is there anyone here in opposition that would like to come to the podium, please? One at a time, one at a time, and please do not keep hammering the same stuff to us time and time again. You'll have a chance to speak. My name is Dorian Clark. I live in 1609 Jefferson Court. Uh, that man, we're, we're the man, my family, that man's been in my family since before me. It's been a lot of kids raised back there, a lot of generations of kids raised back there. And I don't think the kids want to, they don't want to be, they don't want to, they don't even live there, for one. So they don't even see what's going on in that neighborhood. It's a lot of children. It's, I mean, nobody wants to walk past some graveyard at nighttime. Those kids are involved in sports at the evening time. They get out that bus late at night, 6 o'clock, so it's dark out there. My kids don't want to go out there. And that's where all, everybody out there has grandchildren. And all the grandchildren come there in the summertime. They don't want to deal with that. That's all I've got to say. Yes, sir. Can I get your name and address for the record? My name is Richard Wilson. I'm a lawyer for offices at 106 East North Street. Uh, I represent several of these folks here that live in and around this property, uh, mainly along this bottom side of the screen here and up along the, the right side of the screen. Um, what they have failed to tell you in all this is that this piece of property, well, one, I'll address some of the things that they, that they went to first. He didn't buy this piece of property for a cemetery, so the fact that it was some mistake that he doesn't know any kind of zoning or any, 
you know, he, he can't be charged with knowing the roads and all that. He didn't buy it. He bought it to build a house out there. That's what he'll, he's told every one of these people. Yes, yes, sir. Please, audience, please. So, that's a, that's a farce. And, and, and most, most all of this is a farce. Okay? He wants to put a cemetery out there. Because as of right now, this piece of property is in litigation. Okay, he doesn't care about zoning laws. He doesn't care about planning, zoning, any of that stuff. He has he cut he clear cut about a two acre spot of other people's land running out the backside. This road coming out the back was all. Sir, that's that's something that's not before this board. Well, it, it is before this no, board. Sir. It is pertinent that this and this piece and this piece, piece right here. No, sir. If he cut trees that were not on his property, then that does not affect us on this board. That's well. There's an easement also that goes with this property that is his. That, that is before this board. If we're talking about the 23 acres that they're talking about, I'm talking about because what I'm telling you is, and what you're going to find out when you, I'm trying to give it to you in a succinct fashion, rather than have 50 people come up here and tell you in an insincere fashion. So I'm trying to give you the whole story. All right, this man is doing this for the simple, this, this piece of property is in litigation right now. The, the easements in and around it are in litigation right now. He is actively being sued about that. Okay, that is pertinent to this. All right, he's doing this out of pure spite and harassment. That is exactly why he is doing it. And the short answer is, he needs all the event. That's not a place for a cemetery. It's at the end of basically a, a, a paved two path. The 30 foot of road frontage is, I mean, that, there's no way that there's 30 foot of road frontage. It did, I mean, there's, a, there's enough room for me to pull my pickup truck right there at the end and hang a rock. That's the road frontage. That's the paved road frontage. Okay? There's all of this down to the right of I mean, there's no parking out there. It's wet, it's underwater. If you go, I mean, there's, I mean, I, I, I was out there today, I got stuck. One of these residents had to pull me out in a four wheel drive truck. And he, when he's talking about the parking and all that stuff, that's impossible. And you're gonna put dead bodies in a, in a, wet, a wet area like that? I mean, that's the other, that's the other part, is the environmental part. And these aren't people living out there. That is, those are all families. And he didn't do any research, just like he told you when he went in here today. This man that came and spoke to him, that's the bottom line. He didn't do any research when he bought He didn't realize he bought in the middle of all these families. And then he's trying to run them out of there. He's trying to run roughshod over everybody. And he's being sued about it. And so he's going to do the next thing that he can think of, spitefully, to try to deal with these people. And he's trying to pull it over on y'all because he wants a nice place for a cemetery. I'm giving you the real story. Don't don't grant these variances. It's, it's all it's all it's going to do is cause more problems. That's I mean, and there's they've given no good reason for any of it, and 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 it's already been recommended that it been that it be denied, and most of this room agrees with that. And I'll let them do it. All right, sir. Hold hold on hold on. If you have any questions for me, I'll questions. Any discussions? I got what kind of litigation's going on? What who's suing who? Uh, there are Miss Rhonda Wright and her husband Vernon Wright. They live in this mobile home, which is on the back side of this property. I mean, on the on this right side, right on his property line. Okay. There's an easement. There were two easements. One that ran right through, which it looked like on that picture that he had was maybe the, maybe the old easement. If you, if you went straight down that lane there, it would go right through the middle of his property. And that's the way that Miss Wright and her family used to get to their property. Okay? Once that had happened, he closed that off when he bought it. Closed the one off to the middle. So everybody is using the one around the side. Going to the property and make a right and go around. Well, he decided that he was going to open up an unused easement. This is Mr. Thomas on his own. 
decided he was going to open up an unused easement on the back end of the property. And so he cut a runway, basically without their permission or knowledge, cut a runway down, down the other side and then closed off the front easement. Okay, which has been in existence for 75, 50, 75 years, which, and so we're in litigation not only about the use of the easement, which comes in that front place where he's talking about, that road frontage, and right there, you know, to the right, that's all, all that, all that front piece of that property is, is currently in litigation, and plus, obviously, the damage that he caused to the property on the back end without permission. Um, if you go out there, bottom the part of that, on the back side is, is wetlands. I mean, they, they basically, I mean, there's probably some environmental issues that also occurred by cutting that new driveway or, or new easement that he decided to cut through there. And I'm, I'm not talking about a, I'm not talking about a, a sliver. I'm talking about a 200, 300 yard, 50, 60 foot wide path, clear cut. Straight down, I mean, he probably spent $35,000 of his own money to do this without the landowner's permission. And it still failed because it's wet and it's currently underwater right now. And so it's all of that on the front end of that property and around the side of the easement and on the end the, into his side of the property. Um, I mean, on the end to his property. It's, it's soaking wet out there. And that's not just because we had 10, <coughs> rain, just 10 inches of rain this weekend. That's because it's been that way for the last year, year and a half, two years since we've been in this litigation. Um, so, I've got, I've got a question for you. Is Gaines Lane, is it uh, paved? It, it is, it is paved. It's concrete, it's asphalt? It's concrete. Concrete. It's not asphalt. And then when it gets to the property, it's, it's dirt, dirt. 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 And you take dirt a, and water. You hang a right and you go south and then the... the That's the easement. So when you they get on there, there's, you, you okay. hang a right, go down, maybe 50, 75 yards to the right, and then you hang a left and go back up. Yeah, that's, the side that's all the dirt, road. Right? Yes. Yes. yes, all that, dirt. Is that on the water right now? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, I can, I, I can show you a picture on my phone if you, I mean, that I'll sure. to that. I can go get a picture of my cousin's car right now. He just left it. Mine, I got you. Mine, I got just got it pulled out. That's our coach. That is, you can, that's,
Any other questions and discussions for the gentleman before we? Okay, as soon as they get to the we'll send them down that direction. Is there anyone else here that would like to come to the lectern? I need your name and address. Um, I'm Anything else? Now we have 
I have residential lots out there. It is going residential. The highway can't do it. If he can cut a road out to the main highway and get it your, your 250-foot easement, then that's a viable alternative. You can't do it. It's locked. He has one road in, it's Gaines Lane, and it destroys the community. And this board and this county is not in the business of destroying communities. I do want to thank John Holt for excusing himself in this, because John Holt is a, and it does have a serious conflict of interest in this. And uh, I hope the board takes a look at this as a whole piece of business and says this is not the right thing to do. I've been turned down before. And it's not fun to come down here, but when it's wrong, it's wrong. Thank you. Yes?
come out here doing stuff in the city. Cut a road and pick up those mine which caught the mine and cut the uh, road on Mrs. Chandler, run the uh, cut a road up through there, send it down. And we only got 30 feet. Everybody on our side gave 30 feet. And we tried to deal with them, ask them, if he gave 30 feet, we could put a piece of road on it. He won't give them nothing. And don't want us to come across the easement that was already there for us to get back there into our house. And he had me dropped off for about, about a year or so until we went to court. And I couldn't even come to that. Like, like he said, the sheriff had to come out there and straighten that out before we, before we go out and come back to my own house. You know, back there, the far end of the run right here, that, that's the young one. He does a good sewer project, which he had no, no right to do. He didn't even know nothing on that side of the land. And he cut that with night, he couldn't get through that, so I had to break up a lot, a lot of blocks. And I had to dump stuff all the way that way, we could break them up. Fill it in the way I could get back and forth in there. And it's, in order, and over that, the block, the bridge and block that I we got in there, the water is still over that, but I can get there across the block, the bridge. But, uh, boy, it's simple there. We don't need to sit there. It's right, it's right in my truck. You know what? Any questions? Any discussion? Thank you very much. <clears throat> Anybody else got anything that has not been brought to our attention for us to take under advisement? Ladies and gentlemen, any other questions? Any other discussions? I get a motion. I'll out there. Sir? I'll go out there and mark my. Sir. Uh, you had a chance. My water supply. Well, I'm sir. Walking with a cane. I don't want to sell it. You can't understand me. I'll come off No, sir. Make it fast, though, you. That's going to be fast. I just want to say my well, my water well, right on, right on the property line, and so are my son and my daughter in law. I don't, I don't like to build a cemetery there. My well, when I'm drinking water, I'm mm -hmm. All right, sir. You understand what I'm saying? I understand. The health department right. regulations say that the well has to be a certain amount of feet away from a property line. Yeah, well, it's got that's where they put it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, can I get a motion on this request?